Buy a fucking ticket today! <laughs> Let me take you back to the early 90s. Aussie kids are waking up to the smell of toast and Vegemite. Sitting down to the TV, you'd be treated to classics like, uh, Mully Grubs, uh, Aerobics Oz Style, and Agro's Cartoon Connection. The show was hosted by the lovely Anne Marie and the perverted, leering and downright seedy puppet named Agro, who looks shockingly similar to this doll I found on eBay. Together they presented a variety of editorial segments split up with various awesome cartoons. Remember Robotech? Samurai Pizza Cats? Sailor Moon? Ah, memories. It was notable for its provocative humour, which for the most part went right over our little heads. Mum and Dad knew what was going on, though. Three. Careful, it's getting down to your tits. Ow. Do you love me? Does Kay Cotty masturbate? What happens when you misbehave? The ratings go through the roof. It's pretty surreal to see how far they'd go for a joke, especially considering the demographic. Some of the characters and editorials were whack, like Gibbo. Oh, and Crikey the Clown, who was an absolute cunt. Right, who goes? <laughs> but then, you'd get the Ranger Stacy segments, which made up for all the crap. Eventually, competition sprung up in the form of the awesome Cheese TV, and after nine seasons and many fond memories, Agro's Cartoon Connection was replaced by the boring adult show Sunrise, which has occupied the time slot ever since. It is highly unlikely Aussie television will ever see its like again, but it lives on in our hearts like the flawed but classic misfit it was. Alrighty, now it's time for... Localization! In 1992, Beam Software developed a Game Boy title under license from Turner Entertainment. That game was Tom and Jerry, which used an engine programmed by Bill McIntosh. The following year, in 1993, they developed Baby T-Rex, which was released in Europe and used a modified version of Bill's engine. Later that year, in North America, Universal Studios tasked Beam with developing a game based on their animated film, Wear Back. Remember that? During this time, two more versions were developed and released in different regions, one being Bamsey, a fairly popular Swedish cartoon, and finally, Agrosaur for use in Australia. By editing the sprites, cutscenes and premise for each game, Beam clearly aimed to get as much mileage out of that engine as they could, and it doesn't stop there. It is now known that a further six versions of the game were in development at one stage or another for use in various regions around the world, making it one of the most confusing and heavily edited game engines ever conceived. Wow. I had no idea the rabbit hole went this deep. I should have just reviewed Neighbours. Fuck! Agrosaur begins with our titular puppet watching TV. He must be looking out for those inevitable rivals that were soon to appear. A weird show called Curse of Sethron comes on, and Agro begins practicing his YouTube review. Actually, why haven't Channel 7 brought Agro back on YouTube in some sort of capacity? Come on, Channel 7. You got time to monetize my shitty earlier Agro saw review. How about pioneering a new era in Aussie comedy? Back to the game, and a weird looking wizard notices Agro and breaks the fourth wall, dragging him into this prehistoric world. Sethron issues a challenge claiming no one's ever returned from his tower alive, to which Agro replies, You can't kill me, stupid. I'm a puppet. Maybe so, but we can attack your life force, Jamie Dunn. So what we have here is a simple and fairly mediocre platform game that sees Agro running and skating through four different worlds consisting of three stages in each. Jumping, throwing projectiles and avoiding obstacles. 
Agro controls fairly well but has a floaty jump and sometimes feels a little stiff and unresponsive. Stages are littered with the usual platform fare like rocks and diamonds, hearts for extra lives and the eye of Ra for invincibility. Health is represented by hearts but I found no way to replenish them. There are some really tight time limits here so it pays not to dawdle. Round that up with ended level bosses and you got yourself the makings of a generic platform game. Here we are in the first world, the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. As you can see, the graphics are pretty good for the Game Boy. A minimalist approach is always going to work better on the tiny monochrome screen. Just ask Rare. Agro himself animates pretty well and he's got that tiny body and huge head, just like the real thing. Leave him alone for a second and he'll start leering at you. Ugh, stop! He'll even begin tapping his feet and do a little bit of juggling. Bloody show off. The enemies here consist of weird lizards that throw rocks, massive bull ants that you definitely don't want to fuck with, and these pterodactyls that look to be in perpetual agony. I say it all. Throwing rocks dispatches them, but I've noticed that taking a hit randomly reduces your projectile count. Why is that? I think all the creatures in prehistory were a bunch of thieving gits. Agro can slide down slopes, launch off platforms and bounce off springs like Sonic the Hedgehog. This basic inertia engine is simple but impressive for the Game Boy. Although I hate when the level designers get overzealous and instead of just letting you enjoy this nice mechanic, perfectly place spikes right at the end of a big hill. Fuck you cunt. Some of the pterodactyls will carry Agro up steep cliffs, but only after stepping on their eggs. Hmm. Makes sense. I can't hit these ants. See why I said you don't fuck with bull ants? I truly hate when I can't hit enemies with projectiles. Fuck! Here's the first boss, the Brono Guard. He's piss easy, just jump and throw, etc, etc. Um, where do I go now? Isn't the level over? Oh, I gotta walk right up to the edge here and stare death in the face just to scroll the screen slightly to the right and exit the level? Slunt. Beating a stage nets you a bonus based on enemies destroyed, time taken, and projectiles collected. World 2, The Crystal Caves, sees Agro collecting diamonds and riding skateboards. Dude! The controls are a bit stiff, and you need to keep holding the D-pad after jumping to keep up with the bloody thing or you'll lose it. You can usually head straight back to it though. It's a fun way to break up the fairly monotonous gameplay. The next level has you skating into a leap of faith, and that sucked, let me tell ya. You. You'll probably get your first game over here. Luckily, there are continues. That's good! But there aren't any mid-level checkpoints. That's bad. Music is... so-so. I don't mind it, it can be pretty catchy, but after a while it kind of gets repetitive. There are only three or four tracks available anyway, and that's just not enough. Later in the stage you'll find this bowling ball that wipes out enemies in succession. It's fun, when you can get it to work that is. Stage 2-3 is cool in that it acts as a gauntlet of all the stage gimmicks you've encountered so far. The boss is the mother of all those pterodactyls. I want her charged for child abuse. Sethron appears to be getting increasingly worried and desperate as Agro closes in. Kinda like us Victorians and Daniel Andrews with the Belt and Road. Ooh, political reference! Yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. On to the castle dungeons. The level design and difficulty ramp right up in this world. Agro must contend with tough enemies and stage hazards, like crossing large bodies of water on a dinosaur's back skateboarding through tight spaces and navigating through insane amounts of spike traps and once again fantastic level designers place spikes right next to the platforms that need to be landed on it takes all the fun out of the platforming i also hate these bloody statues oh and now for my most hated of all loaves bounce pads that launch you directly into spikes on the ceiling Mmm, yeah, yeah, it's good, it's great, it's nice, I like it. I wonder who these skeletons in the background were. Maybe it's the cast of Agro's cartoon connection. The government! I found my first secret room in this world. I wonder where the rest are. Maybe someone can hit me up in the comments. There's a huge bounce pad gauntlet at the end of this stage. It's frustrating as hell. The boss is a stegosaurus who launches his spinal plates at you in a similar way to the Kraid battle in Metroid. 
I have heard if you manage to collect a hundred projectiles, you'll be taken to a bonus round that'll allow you to gain some kind of super potion. But I've never, ever had the opportunity to see it, because every time you get hit by an enemy, you lose the projectiles. So fuck it, sorry. Once that's done, it's on to Sethron's lair for the final. This world is actually rather short, but throws some pretty mean platforming at ya. But before you know it, it's over and Sethron appears to bombard aggro with projectiles. I forgot to mention earlier, boss fights give you unlimited projectiles, so you don't need to worry about running out. He's got two forms to contend with, but if you've made it this far, he won't pose much of a problem. With that fool out of the way, Agro watches as the castle crumbles before the title of Sethron's show is switched to Curse of Agro. I knew it. I knew it all along! He's... he's evil! Overall, it's a bog-standard platform game that's not worth the circuitry it's written on, and certainly wasn't worth ten different localizations. It is passable though, and it has a decent level of challenge, and features a character much beloved by Aussies who grew up in the 90s. It's a cool little Aussie curio all the same. I've no idea why Beam thought 10 different versions were necessary, but I guess you're happy you didn't get an Ed the Duck version, eh Jake? Anyway, there you have it. A much better aggro saw review. Hope you guys can see the difference between then and now. Have things changed for the better? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading them, it makes my day, even the negative ones. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next mission. Also, you better not be monetizing this channel 7. Say come on, buy a fucking ticket today. <laughs>